Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to Collections Management, where I go over the new acquisitions that I've added into my collection, as I like to call it, even though it is just my my hoard of vintage costume jewelry, etc., and accessories and stuff, really. But I recently made a video going over the brooches that I had added to my wardrobe over the last year and a half or so, and today I thought I would show you some of the other vintage treasures that I've added to my wardrobe since, let's say, the beginning of 2020. So let's start off with a piece that you've already seen, or the eagle-eyed amongst you will have seen already, and that is this celluloid hair comb, which I almost, you can see it better if I hold it against my dress here. This is a black celluloid huge uh, hair comb from probably the 1920s or 30s, this one. Um, it's just uh, about the most gothic delicious thing I've ever seen. Uh, I just love it so much. I was looking for a Victorian hair comb to wear with a cicada gown that I made here on the channel, and I ended up finding this, you know, 20th century comb instead. But, uh, and it's got damage. Like, it's cracked here a little bit from where it's missing its last flower here. Um, so it's got a little bit of damage here, but it's just so stunning. And I've seen combs this pretty go for into the $100 range before, and I think this one was 50 two dollars i think which was again still a pretty big investment especially for someone who doesn't always have hair long enough to wear these things but i just thought this was so stunning i'd never seen this design before i'd never seen one like this it almost looks like like i don't know iron work or like an iron gate or something like that of a like victorian cemetery you see what i'm saying it's just so goth and delicious and it's black so there was no way once i saw this on etsy that it wasn't coming home with me and I'm very happy to have this, like, basically tiara of a comb in my collection now. Another item you may have seen here on the channel if you've been paying very close attention to the things I wear, I suppose, are these dress clips. These are a very nice, large size, gorgeous dress clips here. Actually, this dress would be a very good dress for dress clips because it has many different spots you could clip these kind of things on. It is a little bit more of a scandalous neckline for me. I hope you don't mind. Um, but these are like such a generous size. They're at least like 15 to 20% bigger than most of the dress clips I find. The spring is still in really good working order. These are just base metal and then like glass paste rhinestones, as they say. Um, but the stones on these are like shades of teal and green, which I can't think of anything more me than a little bit of green dashed in there. And I just, as we know, I love dress clips. I made a whole video about them one time. Uh, I have a passion for them. I collect them quite avidly, but I am always looking for matching sets and larger sized ones. So these were right up my alley. And I think these were only $25, which is uh, about the mid range for what I would pay for dress clips. Uh, if something was quite spectacular, I might pay up to maybe, if it was like super, super amazing and in really good condition, maybe $50, but I wouldn't normally pay any more than that for dress clips, I usually, I like to pay under $20 because I'm a bargain hunter, but these I thought were such a good find at 25. I was so happy to have them, especially when I got them in the mail and they were actually like this kind of hefty size. Very exciting. These are probably from the 1940s, um, late 30s through the 40s or with like the heyday for these. Um, you can see them from the 1920s through the 1950s and you can see them sometimes on even pattern illustrations. I talked a lot about them in that dress clip video that I made that one time. So um, if you'd like to know more about dress clips, you can find out more in that rant video I made. And the other jewelry item I have to show you is again a dress clip. This time it's this large brass tone, well gold toned, but probably made out of base metal brass um, or maybe plated dress clip in this nice large size. Again, it just has this clip back on it so you can clip it onto anywhere you'd like, including your hat or whatever, but usually a neckline like this or with a scarf or something. And this is just one by itself, which I do try and get pairs, but this has a little like bug spidery guy on it. And there was just no way that I wasn't gonna snap that up because I collect spider and bug jewelry. Um, I'm kind of picky about it, but I do really like collecting jeweled bugs, even though I'm afraid of bugs as I've previously stated here on this channel, but this little spidery guy with black and green enamel on him, there was just no way that I was going to pass this up. Now it is a shame to only just have the one, but of course sometimes dress clips were sold and intended to be worn alone just as one, and I anticipate because this one is a larger size that that may have been the case with this. I doubt this one is missing its mate. I would think this one is probably meant to be individual just because it is quite a statement all on its own. Next up, I have some gloves to show you because of course I've still been trying to collect the rainbow. It's a bit little like Skittles, you know? Instead of taste the rainbow, I want to collect the rainbow when it comes to gloves. And I do get a lot of questions about gloves, about uh, making gloves, I've mentioned before, because I think a lot of people have a hard time finding gloves to fit them. And I am also in that camp. I am a seven and a half, eight, which is a larger glove size. The way you find your glove size, by the way, is to measure across 
underneath your fingers here. Um, measure around this with like a measuring tape and that uh, corresponds to your glove size. You can usually just type in glove size chart onto Google and it'll come up with the chart for you. But I am a larger glove size so it has taken me a long time to collect a full rainbow of gloves and there was one color that I just couldn't seem to find. Uh, for some reason finding green and blue gloves is always a little bit on the harder side for me. I have found most shades of green at this point, not chartreuse, which of course is the one that I'm always looking for. And they tend to go for more money for some reason. There's a pair of chartreuse gloves on my favorites list on Etsy right now that are going for $75. And you're just not going to catch me paying $75 for a pair of gloves. But strangely enough, the hardest color for me to find is blue, different shades of blue. Uh, light blue I can usually find, but something that I had been on the lookout for for probably the last decade was cobalt blue gloves. And finally, I have like, well, these aren't even cobalt, these are more like a royal blue. Royal blue gloves, finally. It's been taking me years and years and years to find these gloves. I think they were probably like 12 or $15. That's usually what I pay for gloves, by the way. I actually do have a price guide here. I will link it in the description below. Also just talking about what I normally pay for vintage, just because I think you can very easily overpay and I would hate for you to do that. So um, check that out if you wanna see kind of what my baseline guide for shopping for vintage is. But these perfect, no fading, no stains. Uh, they actually were dead stock, I believe, because they still had a label on the inside. And I'm so glad to finally have checked this off my list, uh, just because when you're building a whole rainbow and a collection of gloves, this is a very essential color in that. And I'm so pleased to have this and I can pair these with any outfit that needs a royal blue glove from now on. Of course, now the hunt begins for a royal blue wool hat to match, but we'll get there, you know? I don't actually have a handbag or a hat this color or shoes this color. So this is a whole new color for my accessory collecting to fixate on, which is great news. And this next pair are actually just a really fun kind of uh, silly pair of gloves. These are probably from, I would say the 1980s, that kind of Madonna-ish era, because these are sparkly, sheer, like fishnet kind of gloves with like an iridescent glitter mylar running through them. But sometimes I'm, I'm known to quite like a little bit of sparkle and glitter. So I thought for evening, when I'm wearing something iridescent, that these might be quite fun, no? Or with like a black suit jacket for evening? I thought they would be fun. Um, they are, of course, I guess, again, a little bit 80s Madonna, but then again, I quite like 80s things, don't I? So these were just a little bit of a fun purchase. I think these were, again, dead stock and were around, they're under $10 for sure. I think they were around like six bucks actually. And so again, a bit of an impulse buy these ones, but I'm happy to add something so unique to my collection, even if it is a bit later than the rest of my gloves, which are more 50s or 60s pieces, um, a couple of 40s pairs of gloves, but I'm happy to have a pair of 80s gloves to add into. And then the last pair of gloves I have to show you are again, a sheer net black glove, but these ones actually are probably from the 1960s. I would imagine they are actually by Stetson of all brands, funny enough, but they have this lovely, this is like a micro dot, net and they don't stretch actually very much at all so they're kind of hard to get on but i think they're i don't know there's something about gloves that is a little bit sensual anyway <laughs> but then to have a sheer glove just feels a little bit sexy which is not usually my bag but you know even i can be devious sometimes and they have this really fun like micro pleating along the cuff with this extra detail here and they're actually the fingers are almost actually long enough for me which is so rare for me in gloves they fit quite well even without the stretch and I just thought that these were divine and I'm very happy to have added them to my different textures of black gloves collection because of course I do have many pairs of black gloves because we all know how much I love wearing black but I didn't have any sheer black gloves so you know now I can cross that one off my list next I have a few silk scarves to show you I'm really need to stop collecting silk scarves. The problem with silk scarves are, usually for me, is that at the thrift store, they're like 99 cents and then usually like 50% off of that. So it's like 50 cents for silk scarves. So I have trouble not taking them all home with me. Um, so I try to only collect things that are particularly special. Um, so I have a couple to show you today. Uh, one that is just like my ultimate scarf, but we'll get to it. But this one was a Christmas present actually that I received this last holiday season. It is this gorgeous red and black 1950s, I would assume, scarf that has furniture, umbrellas, uh, a jewelry box, kind of different household sort of items or like boudoir almost kind of items. There's like perfumes and lamps and a purse and chairs and books, kind of just random uh, like kitschy things on here. But I like the black silhouette. It almost reminds me of like, I don't know, a scene from Fantasia or something with this like 
random household items floating around or like you know in um the haunted mansion in madame leota's room where there's just like random objects from the room floating around i don't know for some reason that's what this reminds me of and i think it's very pretty and i'm very was very happy to receive this as a gift and of course black and red a classic combination that can never go wrong uh, with like a black suit or a black dress yes and this next scarf does actually have a little bit of damage but the print was just so fun that i decided to look past it i'm pretty sure this scarf is from like the 1990s it's from echo but it's a rather modern looking echo scarf of course they've been making scarves for a very long time um since at least the 1950s i think um so i have many echo scarves in my collection but this one has like chrysanthemums or sunflowers i can't really exactly tell which we're trying to go for here and then all these different muted colors of butterfly oh i just think it's so pretty it's like a whispery ghost scarf uh it's not it's like springy without being at all cheerful in the best way it just looks a little bit ghostly and i just love it this one is 100 percent silk so it's always nice to have actual silk scarves but it does have some staining uh, which is actually more prominent on the back which is nice so it has some like looks like almost color transfer i don't know if you can see this here um in this kind of area there's a little bit of color transfer but it's just so gorgeous that i'm willing to again look past its small flaws because with any suit or just even just like draped over a blouse or something pinned with a dress clip you know and i just love this soft gray color and we all know how i feel about collecting bug things if i could find like a moth themed scarf like this i'd have to snap that up as well it's i should look for more bug print scarves seeing as now that i have bug jewelry i, I need to get on that but the last silk scarf that i have to show you today is literally my dream scarf I really, you know, I tend to actually look quite like Anne Klein things and uh, Anne Klein scarves in particular. And this one, goodness, all I can say is green marbled with black with gold like stars on it. It looks like marbled like Italian end paper, you know, only in silk like this and in this like rich almost teal leaning green and gold within like the black trim that almost looks like outer space oh man i just i adore this scarf i think it's so beautiful oh my goodness it's stunning <laughs> i just love this scarf so much i haven't seen it like on camera like this it's so pretty in the light i don't know why i need any other scarves honestly because when am i going to reach for anything else when this is an option I mean, my hair kind of clashes right now, so I'll have to do something about that, but this is kind of my dream scarf. And like I said, I just had really good luck finding vintage last year, even though everything else was crappy. Uh, I found some of the most gorgeous things that I'm so thrilled to have now. And again, this one is Anne Klein for Vera. Um, this is a silk scarf from them. So Vera, again, another large name in scarves. And this one does have a little bit of damage. Here's a hole here, but of course, I think that it's worth looking past that vintage of course comes with a history and like you know who knows who's been munching on this scarf over the years but i will continue to love her until she falls apart now i'm going to show you a few handbags that i picked up over the last two years or a year and a half or so here but i actually have picked up uh, quite a few handbags over the last year and a half just again i kept finding really good bargains there were some things that i got for ten dollars that i just still can't believe so if you want to see more vintage handbags that i picked up recently let me know and i will do a separate video just on all of the handbags that i picked up over the last couple of years because i made a clutch handbag collection video several years ago but i've added several things to my collection since then um sometimes i just go bargain hunting and try and find things under ten dollars and i can find some, sometimes i find the wildest things for under ten dollars um this one was however not under ten dollars this was my birthday present splurge to myself last year um in 2020 i decided that i could go for something very fun for my birthday because i wasn't going to get to do anything fun out and about for my 29th birthday so i purchased this telephone cord clutch for myself as a 29th birthday present to me and i will always know that's when i picked it up these clutches were a bit of a trend in the late 40s and into the 50s i've seen them actually in my montgomery wards catalogs they were a bit of a thing all the different telephone cord 
funny novelty bags. You see them as handbags and as clutches. And this one, I really liked the simplicity of the stripes. I felt like it toned down the kitsch of it all a little bit, just enough for me. Um, I like the way it has a bit of a base for it to sit on. It looks almost like it's been made out of Lego, but of course, up close, you can tell it is telephone cord. And this is in nice rainbow striped colors, which we all know how I have an affection for rainbow themed things for again, reasons. So I extra love these rainbow bags like this. And I'm so happy to have this in my collection now. I've been eyeing telephone cord bags like this for a very long time, but they are very collectible. And so they're on the pricey side of vintage items that you can pick up. If you can find these for under $100, I would I would say snap it up even if you don't want one for resale value, just because they go for around 100. And I think that's what I ended up paying for this one. Again, it was a birthday splurge for myself. And this is definitely a very collectible item. That is something I feel like maybe I don't mention enough about vintage accessories is that when I buy these things, I do know that they will retain their value because of course no one is making any more vintage out there. So this is something that is an investment. It's expensive to purchase, but if I were to sell this tomorrow, I would get my money back. So in some ways it's a little bit, uh, it's funny when you're buying vintage because it is, it can be an investment like buying art or something like that, um, that they will eventually have resale value. So I don't, it, it kind of makes me feel a little bit less bad about spending so much money on something. So yes, the telephone cord clutch was my birthday splurge last year, a rainbow clutch handbag like that. Um, I, we all know how I love Plastiflex bags as well. So it's kind of in a similar vein to that. And I keep it next to my Plastiflex up in my closet. And then magic, well, lightning struck again, because this year, about like two weeks ago, actually, I think it was uh, something magical happened over on Etsy. And um, sometimes on Etsy, I'll just type in things like 1940s handbag and hit newest. And this this came up. Um, this is a Plastiflex handbag in this like long strip stripes of plastic. I have only ever seen these in like advertisements in my in like catalogs. I've never I've never seen one a real one, um, especially not for sale. So when I saw this, you better believe I hit add to cart instantly because it's like a rainbow striped long strip Plastiflex. I had nothing like it. I'd never seen one before. This was my birthday splurge rainbow clutch this year for my 30th birthday. So again, I will always know that I bought this for myself as my 30th birthday present. Again, it has a metal zipper here along the top. And this one does have a label inside. It is by Park Lane Plastics. Um, again, it has the patent pending label on this one. It has a little bit of an envelope uh, or like a pocket inside here probably from, again, the mid to late 1940s into the 1950s. Uh, Plastiflex were a big thing, or were a trend in the 1940s. I'm not sure that if, ever, if they were ever a big thing in the 1940s, but I have seen a couple of candid photos and photos of people using and wearing them. And then of course they do appear in most of my wards catalogs and I assume were pretty readily available, um, especially if they were available mail order like that. But rainbow striped Plastiflex in this strips of plastic one. Again, I've seen them in catalogs before, I had never seen a real one. I was absolutely thrilled to find this. This was around $70. So again, a pretty huge investment. But for someone like me who is an avid Plastiflex collector, you, you got to know that there was no way I wasn't going to be uh, dipping into the savings a little bit, the birthday uh, cheat day situation to be able to snap this up because it's just stunning. And then the last spectacular, I'm kind of showing you the most the three most spectacular handbags that I added to my collection in the last two years or so. Um, and this is the last of the like truly spectacular handbags because I'm about to hold it up and you will see immediately why it's, it's, it's a very glittery. See, yeah, there you go in the light like that. This is a completely beaded box handbag, probably from again, the 1940s with like a brass, um, fixtures or like, um, handle fixtures and frame. I was looking for the word frame here and it just does clip open inside here. The seller actually included a sachet of lavender. So I appreciate that. Um, it's got several different pockets in here, including a zipper pocket and a spot for your lipstick, which would actually fit um, my phone very well, which of course they were not into spinning at the time. It does have a little mirror in here like many vintage handbags do as well. There's plenty of room in here. Um, it's actually, this was a little bit bigger than I was expecting when I ordered this online, but this isn't a um, like purple finish uh, iridescent iris bead. It's, uh, I think this is what they're called an iris finish bead these. Um, you do see these in dark green as well and 
Wouldn't I like one of those in like a hematite kind of color in dark brown? So these all beaded bags like this do come in a couple different colors, and this is the kind of purple iris shade of them. Uh, this one was just in amazing condition. A lot of times you'll see them with the corners really banged up or missing beads or loose beads and things like that. This one's just in stunning condition. Even the handle is in really amazing condition. It seems like it was basically never used. Even the inside is quite clean, which I'll show you. Actually, I have one more. That reminds me, I have one more handbag to show you um, where the inside is less than perfect, but the outside is still very cute. So we're gonna make it work. But this sort of beaded bag and especially a box shaped one like this was again, something that had been on my kind of vintage wish list for a very long time. So when I saw this one in such amazing condition, I went ahead and uh, sprung for it. And I just for a long time had wanted one of these like night sky sparkling beaded handbags. And I of course can't wait to wear it out and use it out and about, I think, you know, even just like sitting next to you at the bar. It's just a very pretty object. It looks like art to me. We all know how I feel about vintage. I, to me, these are just spectacular things worthy of preservation. And this is kind of a museum almost quality piece. It's in such stunning condition and I will be very using it very gently to so that it remains in such stunning condition. Then the last handbag I have to show you is another example of the box style handbag I've been talking about a little bit here. This one is in a faux leather and it's actually a faux cord, C-O-R-D-E, uh, finish on this, which is interesting. This is a style of bag that was again, a thing in the late forties and into the fifties. Cord handbags were definitely a thing throughout the forties and into the fifties, um, the actual cord handbag. But this one is actually not real cord. It's like faux leather made to look like cord braid, which is a different style. And I just never seen an ivory one that was this in this good of condition. Um, the stitching is a little bit stained on this, but usually it's really quite hard to collect white and ivory handbags or vintage things in general, because a lot of times over the last 60 to 70 years, things have picked up a few stains or discoloration. And this one was in such good shape still. Uh, the handle is a little bent out of shape, but once you start holding it, it kind of springs back to where it needs to be. This again has just a like kiss lock at the top here and separated inside. This is the one where we have some uh, nonsense in the bottom here, which looks like lipstick, but it's uh, like cold to the touch. I think it was actually nail polish. I'm not sure if this ended up in somebody's like, uh, you know, play clothes box or something and how it ended up with nail polish in the bottom of it. But I'm glad there's only nail polish on the inside and no nail polish on the outside. I had been looking for a white or ivory handbag, uh, a box bag, preferably for a long time, like several months. It was just like on my radar, on my search list of things to look for online. And I just couldn't find anything I liked. Everything I ever saw like for an okay price was quite stained. Um, and then one day I like refreshed and this was waiting for me. And I was like, that's the one. So I finally have the white handbag I've been dreaming of for a long time. And I think this one is so special and I'm super excited to have it added it to my collection. And lastly, we have one more holy grail unicorn piece to show you today. Um, it's not a handbag. It's actually not an accessory item. It's the only uh, type of vintage clothing I buy, which we know is vintage suiting. Now I collect vintage suiting. I try and buy at least like one new vintage suit a year. It's kind of like my big splurge of the year usually, although those handbags were really cutting into my splurge budgeting. But uh, this last year after the terrible 2020, something really quite miraculous popped up on Etsy that I could not could not avoid um, adding to my wardrobe. And that is a black Lillian suit in my size. Now, I did already have a Lillian. Those of you who, again, follow my wardrobe quite closely know that I have this navy blue and ivory Lillian that I bought several years ago. This one was far under market value. It does have some moth damage, but um, I got it for quite a bargain and it was in my size. And I thought, I'm never gonna see anything like this for under $300 like that ever again. So I picked it up. Um, dipped into my savings that time back then when I was like working part-time and really could not afford that suit. Um, but I made the irresponsible choice to get it and it is stunning and I will hopefully be wearing it for many years to come. And uh, I always thought, okay, cool. I found my Lily Ann, check off the unicorn like bucket list of vintage items. But in the back of my head, of course, I was thinking if I ever found a black Lily Ann, wouldn't that be amazing? And at the end of Terrible 2020, I did. So here is my black Lily Ann suit. It is from the early 1950s. Here's the original ad for this suit actually. Um, of course, this one seems to be in a different size than mine, but I was shocked to be able to find this suit in my size. It is quite hard to find vintage suiting in larger sizes, let alone a Lillian in larger sizes. So this seems like quite a rare find. This one is in amazing condition. My other suit has some moth damage, like I said, but this one 
is in stunning condition. The belt is a little fragile, so I'm not wearing the original belt with this. I actually have my own modern velvet belt here. Um, but this suit is a dream find for me. It was, again, quite the investment. Um, not... It does. It was not at the price that these normally go for. <laughs> the price that normally Lillianne's go for, uh, they can go for seven hundred and fifty to about a thousand dollars for nice Lillianne suits. Um, that's not what I paid for this one. I paid far under that. But uh, I don't think I could ever spend seven hundred fifty dollars on a suit or on any vintage item. Um, I have a hard enough time spending that much money on like a new laptop, let alone anything else. So there's no way I could, no way I could splurge that hard. But um, this was still a really big investment for me. However, it is a black suit, which I just know I will be wearing. Like, it's never going to go out of style, and I will be wearing this suit for the foreseeable future. And until I'm at least 70 and don't want to leave the house anymore. Not that I want to leave the house, particularly now, as we know. But if I got to wear this suit, I certainly would. But that was the last of the, like, spectacular vintage treasures that I added to my wardrobe over the last year and a half, two years here uh, since lockdown began, kind of. So I still had these treasures to share with you. And I always do like to at least do a little bit of a show and tell because I feel, you know, like I'm like a dragon who like hoards a pile of treasures. And I feel at least by being able to share them with you and like try and educate you on the kind of prices I'm paying for these sort of things to at least be able to, uh, I don't know, have some like way of sharing the joy of these vintage items with other people because otherwise it just feels very selfish of me to like kind of hoard them, um, which it still does, but uh, at least hopefully you enjoyed seeing them. Do let me know if you would like to see my vintage handbags or scarves perhaps next here on Collections Management. Just let me know what you'd like to see most and I will try and make a video and slip it into the schedule sometime. And of course, I'll be back here with more vintage style and sewing real soon and I will see you all then. Bye.